Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malentrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for this segment, we have Michael Schvo, founder and CEO of Schvo, a development company with a portfolio valued at over $8 billion to discuss super prime real estate and future of the office. Michael, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. All right. And for those of us who work in New York City, we are always interested in this conversation. Let's start with super prime real estate with hybrid and flexible work schedules increasing, being offered as a perk to retain talent and as a way to save on major fixed costs. How is that going to impact the super prime real estate market? So look, I've never been more confident in the super prime real estate segment. Um, we, we're going through what we call the, or what I call the great correction in, uh, um, in, 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 in commercial real estate. Pre-COVID, if you looked at the, at, at the market swing, the bottom of the Class A market, which is the office, was trading at 50 bucks a foot, the top of the market at 150 bucks a foot, that is kind of the rents. Today, the bottom stayed the same at 50 bucks a foot, but the top is at 300. And what's really happening? Where's the shift? And there's four things that really happen um, through COVID. Obviously, there's a new awareness of our surrounding, right? For the last two years, all we're, we're told is all we have to worry about is the six foot around us. So in, in, in that sense, employers are trying to give employees more space. So we are seeing larger companies actually increase space. You've seen some two very large Google deals, both in New York and in London over the last uh, couple of months. But employers need to bring employees back to the office. Uh, the idea of working from home is, it might be a short term, it might be a midterm, but we're not going to see, I don't believe we're going to see a long total shift in long-term kind of total shift in that, in that aspect. Uh, but larger companies, uh, stable companies are looking for higher quality office. What does that mean? Companies in New York City that have moved over the last uh, 12 months, we're seeing that they've moved to either similar quality office or higher office. So from A to trophy, from B to A, that really tells a story that there's a strong flight to quality. The other side of it is that companies can afford it. If you think about the profitability of all these larger companies that are doing fairly well, profit margins have gone up. The percentage of rent has de decreased overall profits, and but rent hasn't moved that much. So commercial market over the 12 years have moved 2.5% uh, um, uh, compounded a year versus the market that that has moved probably eight and a half to nine percent. So there's a lot of there's a correction right now happening where we're seeing the bottom of the market to the top of the market opening up. Um, go ahead. What what upgrades are necessary to usher iconic buildings into? The next chapter, I mean, we saw what happened downtown in New York City, right? And we had the influx into Midtown with more modern wired offices. So what do we do to get these iconic buildings um, upgraded to, to usher into, you know, the next generation of work? So, look, there's there's the typical things that you're reading everywhere. If it's the filtration systems or the HVAC systems, people want to know that they're in a healthy building. Then one of the big things that that uh, em tenants are asking is for operable windows, something that was never a question or never an, an ask in buildings previously. Outdoor space is huge, right? So, um, you know, in San Francisco, as an example, we own the Transamerica Pyramid. We own a private park. That could not. There's no bigger amenity today that you can offer tenants than having their own private park. But there's another uh, issue that I think we should be focusing on over the past two years people have made their homes into their offices right so now it's time if we want to bring people back that we make our offices feel like home and it's not just about the filtration systems and the open operable windows it's really about giving that that feeling when you come to the office I'll give you an example on fifth avenue we just completed a repositioning of a building that what used to be the coca-cola building on fifth avenue and 54th street Peter Marino, that designs every Chanel, Vuitton, uh, uh, Dior, and probably some of the homes of the wealthiest people in the world, has designed that building for us. Um, that really transforms the office space into a much more residential feeling. That is a shift that we've been seeing kind of over through COVID. I think that is, is probably the most long-term effect that we will see through COVID, where there has to be some hospitality level, some a residential level in in people's work for in people's work environment. Yeah, we we've seen the uh, transformation just within our offices themselves. I mean, like the kitchen areas and the bar areas and everything are, are just it's quite dramatic um, to see how they're bringing that residential feel into the offices. So, um, as you were speaking about your portfolio, Michael, how has Schvo's portfolio performed in spite of the pandemic? 
So, you know, we've been quite, you know, quite, I'd say lucky, I guess. The, the pandemic has actually been quite, quite good to us because in times like this, super prime real estate outperforms the market. So uh, from rent collection, we've had 99% rent collection throughout our portfolio, including retail on Fifth Avenue. So we own a national portfolio, of Chicago, LA, New York, Miami, uh, San Francisco, uh, really gateway cities. And we try to own the, one of the top five buildings in the top locations in these gateway cities. Um, we've, all, we've also been extremely fortunate you know, we have low debt levels, so there's really no, you know, which helps you in, in times times like these. But super prime real estate everywhere, not only the Schwab portfolio, but really any other company that's been holding great real estate has done fairly well because the flight to quality has increased rents. So an example, Transamerica Pyramid, when we bought the building, rents were $60 to $100. The, the lowest rent, we lowest lease we've signed over the last year was at $100 a foot. Rents have doubled through the pandemic, even though the San Francisco market is going through a lot of turbulence right now. There is a flight to quality that helps helps us tremendously through times like this. And to wrap up here, let's shift gears and talk about the residential luxury lifestyle because we know prior to the pandemic, um, residential buildings were being built as your entire day can be fulfilled with all the amenities that were offered, whether it was retail or, or just um, gyms and, and other things that were available to residences. How do you think the residential luxury lifestyle and city center properties will evolve? Because they seem as if they were really evolving prior to the pandemic and had some really unique things going on at the properties. So there's been a natural evolution of what you would call the, the race to amenitize these buildings. But I think you know, what we've been doing for the past three years is really trying to give people their time back. And what does that mean? There's no greater luxury than somebody's time, right? We're developing Mandarin Oriental residences on Fifth Avenue, Mandarin Oriental residences in Beverly Hills, the Raleigh and Miami Beach. But the idea there is that you're, in essence, buying a hotel without the hotel guests. So everybody wants to live in a hotel, right? It's, there's no great, greater luxury than getting room service and getting your turndown service and the flowers and not worrying about anything. That is really the, the idea behind some of these residences. So we brought in Danielle Balud to create Balud Privé, which is private dining with Danielle Balud. Mandarin is operating all these buildings as it would be a hotel, but without the guests. You're buying units that are fully furnished turnkey, which in today's supply chain is a, another amenity. I did not predict that, but that, that's a, like a little ad, added bonus. But the idea is that you can come in and it doesn't matter if you're local, if you're international, and buy a resident and move in the next day and lock and go and travel and do whatever you want without worrying about who's going to clean the apartment or ordering room service. That is a new, that to me is the next level and the new level of luxury. We got to give people their time back. We've all been cognizant how valuable our time and as COVID, I think, has again ignited those feelings and has, if anything, has sparked a lot more desire for these type of uh, residences. Well, I mean, Michael, too, once we have foreign money coming back into the New York City market and the big city markets with everything already furnished, you sign a lease and then, you know, you're into the apartment. That, that's a, It's great timing for that. It, it is great timing. And we're seeing, I could tell you that that both in New York and Beverly Hills, we're seeing foreign buyers. So these are condos for sale. We are seeing a lot of foreign buyers. We're seeing people actually buy through Zoom, believe it or not. Uh, but we are seeing um, foreign buyers because at the end of the day, you know, New York is the center of the world. Doesn't matter what everybody else says. We're, you know, we're, we we know that that this is the center of the world, and everybody wants to be here. Um, obviously, COVID has been has been has hurt us because tourism has been has been you know hurt tremendously. But it will come back. We know COVID is not here forever, um, in the sense that it's not going to affect the real estate market forever. And we're getting pricing today at numbers that are way higher than pre-COVID, which is quite interesting because there's also been a lack of development through COVID. So lack of supply, lots of demand, and if anything, lots of de demand for unique product, right? Buyers want to buy something special today. They want to buy something that they can't get anywhere else, and they want to buy experiences. Um, and those experiences, something that we're obviously focused on, on delivering, both on the residential side, and you see some of these uh, similarities between the residential market and the commercial market, where the users, if it's a buyer, if it's a tenant, if it's a resident, they want something that's unique to them. They want somebody to care about what is important for them. And if you can deliver that, and that's what Shabo is focused on, you're getting a substantial premium over the market.
All right, Michael, we appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Thank you, Jill. Have a good day.